Good morning. This is Brooklyn. I want to take a moment to thank, and I'm going to try to stay out of the sun so I don't get blinded, but I want to take a moment to thank Skift and Rafat for inviting me to be here, of course, to participate in the forum, but also because it was my opportunity to elevate my coolness factor with my 15-year-old daughter. Uh, because when I told her I was coming to Brooklyn to speak at a Skift forum, that sounded so much more cool to her than going to New York on a business trip. So I'm really grateful for this. And Brooklyn is really uh, a perfect place for this forum to take place because this is the place that so many people around the world are looking to come. I'm here from Chicago, but it wasn't that long ago that even New Yorkers were not that interested in coming to Brooklyn. And now, every day, there are plane loads of tourists landing at JFK, so many of whom want to come here. I mean, Brooklyn is so popular now that these days, Jay-Z has to circle the borough like four or five times before he can find a place to land his helicopter. It's undeniable that there's been a radical transformation of perspective on Brooklyn. And this idea of a transformed perspective is exactly what I want to talk about this morning. It really hit me recently as I was thinking about and reflecting on a business trip I had taken to New York some time ago. Now, you can imagine that I travel quite a lot, and you can also imagine that I can usually find a pretty good room at a Hyatt hotel. So that's usually where I'm staying. But in this instance, I had an early morning meeting with a friend of mine. And through our discussion, we realized that our time was going to be compressed. So we decided that I would stay with him at his home in Darien, Connecticut, so that we would have the time on the commute between waking up in the morning and our meeting time to actually catch up and fill out time. So I, I go to his house, and he lives in this big, very old house, over 100 years old, and he's taking me upstairs to show me to the guest room. And we walk up this wooden staircase, and it is really loud, like creaking. So we get to the top of the staircase, and we go down this hallway, a very long hallway with a wooden plank floor. So I'm walking down this hallway, we pass the door to the master bedroom, he and his wife had their bedroom there, and at the end of the hall on the left side is where the guest room is. By the time I get to this guest room, I am seriously anxiety ridden because all I can think about is how much noise I'm going to be making while I'm in this person's house. And so immediately I'm now obsessing, like how do I minimize my impact on their lives? So over dinner, I'm like, you know, so tell me uh, what time do you usually get up? And um, do you go out for a run in the morning? And is someone coming down to make coffee? I'm trying to triangulate like, how I can conduct myself while I'm there to tread lightly and to minimize the impact I have on their routine, on their lives. And here, in this instance, I'm the guest and they're the host. And I'm the one sweating what impact I'm gonna have on them. And as I sat back and I thought about it, it really introduced a, a tremendous paradox in my mind because in, in our industry, in the hotel business, we refer to people who come into our hotels as guests. I mean, we have an entire lexicon around it. We have guest rooms and guest satisfaction, and we have guest metrics. And we consider ourselves to be hosts. But for a moment, imagine if you reverse that. Just imagine if you took a walk in a guest's shoes. When you do that, you realize that those of you staying in our hotels are not the guests at all. It's us, the hotels, that are the guests in your lives. Lives that don't start or stop when you come through the front door of our hotel. Guests are people. They have their own routines. They have their own responsibilities. They've got their own emotions, their anxieties. And those things carry on while they're with us. You quickly think about the fact that the best thing that we could do to care for you would be to tread lightly 
not interfere with your routine, allow you to go on your, your own pace and maintain the cadence of your life. Because we're the guests in your lives. So this morning I'd like to pose a question, which is, what if hotels treated guests like hosts? What if hotels checked into guests' lives instead of guests checking into hotels? In other words, what if hotels were guests in the lives of others? Seeing the world through others' eyes is exactly the kind of reverse perspective that I think our industry needs desperately. A lot of people these days talk about empathy. I know I'm one of them. And empathy is most often described as the act of walking in someone else's shoes. So this morning, I want to take a moment to walk in the shoes of a few different types of people. And I want to focus on three companies that I think have done a remarkable job of reversing perspective and reimagining their relationship with customers, with employees, and with community. So let's start with consumers. A lot of people talk about the power of empathy, and I just described a little bit about how that can be applied in our business. A lot of people talk about customer-centric design and designing products and services through the lens of a, of, a, of a customer, and that's all great. But ultimately, there are some emotional truths that, are only a, that you can only reach through reversing your perspective. And one example I would give you is Minute Maid. Minute Maid, through their efforts to get to know a category of their customers better, the category that they focused on was parents of kids that they were pouring orange juice for in the morning, um, they asked these parents a simple question. How are you doing as a parent? And for those of you who are parents in the, in the um, audience, you know that that's like an existential question. You get, it's like, it's like you getting, getting in someone's face about something that's really sensitive. And of course, what came out was a tremendous outpouring of anxiety, of concern, of inadequacy, always felt like they could do more. So Minute Maid said, that's interesting and so consistent. Let's go talk to the kids and ask them the same question. And what came back was this incredible outpouring of gratitude, of recognition around care and around uh, unconditional love that they felt. And when that was communicated back to the, these parents, when they reversed their perspective on the parents themselves and said, don't think about it through your lens and through your considerations where you're seeing on Instagram and Facebook all of the do-it-yourself birthday cards and incredible events that have been thrown for the friends of your kids, how inadequate you are, listen to the voice of your child. And it was super powerful. I mean, it, it, it definitely brought tears to my eyes and I think it really tapped into an essential emotional truth that was only available if you reverse perspective. And by the way, Minute Maid's market share went up after they launched this campaign. So it actually resonated deeply with this category of customers. So let's talk about employees, colleagues. Now, a lot of companies say, well, of course, our people are our most, our most valuable asset, our most important asset, and oftentimes, the conception of great policy and great procedure around employment practices is what, is what results from this consciousness. But every once in a while, you see a company that steps back and turns it around and reverses perspective and gains a critical insight. And that critical insight leads to the idea that an employer can work for its employees as much as the other way around. And the example I would give you is Netflix. For those of you who know Netflix, you know that they have a very, very strong culture. That culture is what they've leaned on to really transform the business through a very disrupted time in what they've done. But the insight that they, they, they achieved and then acted on was the idea that families with young, new, new families with young children, with infants, um, need extra support. And it's not just a maternity leave policy that they needed, it was a paternity leave policy as well. And they introduced a paternity leave benefit 
that extends for a year because their insight was the whole family is affected. It's not just uh, the mother in, typical, in a typical uh, circumstance where a newborn is a part of a, a family or where a, a couple may have uh, adopted a child. And that reverse perspective really caught hold and, and really communicated loudly to everyone that was working at Netflix and caught a lot of other attention as well. And I think you all know how successful that culture has been in, in how Netflix has done what they've done. You know, there's that old adage that um, failure is an orphan, but success is, has many, I guess, well-rested fathers. Maybe that's what they had in mind. Um, so now let's talk about community. So many companies are dedicated to corporate social responsibility. And that's largely framed through the lens of the company. Like, what are the resources that we've got that we can leverage, we can take hold of and push out into the communities in which we're operating? What impact can we have on them? That's the perspective through which many CSR initiatives are undertaken. But if you reverse that perspective and you think about the fact that communities are out there and alive and vibrant and, and thriving, how can you actually think about what's true about those communities and integrate it into who you are and what you do? That's really the way in which Starbucks approached this uh, challenge that they identified, which is that there are more than five and a half million young people in the United States that have the will and the heart to actually be employed and a part of the commercial reality of, of life but don't have the opportunity to do that. They don't have the opportunity because their resume doesn't look right, or they don't have requisite skills or a credential of some kind. So they put together a coalition. This is the 100,000 Oppor Opportunities Coalition with 30 companies, ours included. And the companies got together and committed to hire 100,000 what are referred to as opportunity youth over the next three years. And it's a powerful beginning. We had a, a kickoff in Chicago. Over 3,500 people attended. 800 positions were offered on the spot. And most importantly, every single company that had representatives there had their eyes opened to the fact that there were great human beings out there in this community that would make great employees, despite the fact that they wouldn't have ever seen them as candidates because they didn't have the right resume, they didn't have the right credential. And that reversal of perspective to think about pulling the community into you as opposed to pushing your resources out to it is really the power. So we talked a little bit about how reversing perspective can transform our business and transform industry. By changing your point of view, you can reimagine your relationship with your customers, your employees, with your community. We can actually create that world in which hotels are the guests in others' lives where employers are working for their employees as much as the other way around, and where the communities are becoming a part of who you are and what you stand for and, and uh, how you do what you do. And these are just a few of the awesome powers of empathy. I think for anybody who understands what the meaning of that word is, you also know that impact can only come through action. Because when you act, on an empathetic insight or an empathetic impulse, it's the purest form of humanness. It's something that you do to anticipate a need or share a moment of joy or try to alleviate a burden in, in some way. And you can do it in a way that only enhances the bottom line, as you heard in my examples. But not just the financial bottom line, but the impact that you can have on people that you touch every day. So as we think about applying empathy in our business, we think about it as the essential capacity to bring humanity back into hospitality. At Hyatt, we have an equation that we use. And it's an equation that we put together to remind ourselves to reverse perspective, practice empathy, and combine it with action. So it's a call to action. So it goes empathy plus action equals care. And care is really the essence of what we stand for. It's, it's why we exist as a company. We care for people so they can be their best. And when we're at our best and when our industry is at its best, we can actually fulfill that mandate. And so no matter what purpose your company may have, you can unleash this amazing power of empathy by reversing your perspective and not only 
do a humane thing, but practice really smart business at the same time. Thank you.